Hi guys, over the last five years or so, I've created and published hundreds of videos, almost exclusively addressing fictitious gods, their followers and their religions, and most of them critical of Islam and claims made by followers of Islam. I've published many of these criticisms in my blog and contribute my opinion on a multitude of platforms, forums and public comment sections. Now, many people, especially Muslims, have asked me why I do this and what I get out of this. Since it's a, very, well, it's a valid question, I will explain my motivation using only the top points as explaining everything in depth would take hours. Over time, I have learned not to believe something without a reason. Additionally, I try and test everything I do believe, whether it is true, i.e. can be validated by comparing it to reality, and whether there is some sort of justification to hold that belief. Now, something I've considered, tested and chucked out is a God belief. Yes, I have looked at it and thrown it out. Simply because there is not a single reason to believe gods exist, and dozens why they don't. Well, see, see my why I don't believe video for this. Now, this foundation enables me to place Islam under a spotlight and a microscope and examine it objectively as an outsider, as good as this is possible. And yes, I admit I have a bias towards truth and naturalism. So the entire God claim in Islam is immediately taken out of the equation. And what, what is left is a, well, unfortunately, it's a pernicious, misogynistic, primitive, brutal and pretty dark text filled with ancient superstitions, but occasionally with sentences which are useful even today. And this text is called the Quran. Adding the secondary text and scholarly opinions on top of that, I get a package which I have over time dissected and examined and analyzed and then used the information gathered to form an opinion. And that is why I need to expose Islam for what it is in self-defense. Yes, I am defending myself against Islam. Not Muslims, mind you. Not, not most Muslims anyway. And okay, so how is this a valid claim and what makes my claim a valid claim? Islam from the historical beginnings until today has always been and still is a political and social system, a political ideology, just like socialism, liberalism or communism for that matter. And Islam is based on the Quran, the primary text. And a third of this text is made up of ideas describing goals and methods for the organization of society, i.e. politics. The Quran describes ideas which are normally found in economy, finance, defense, justice, foreign affairs and interior ministries, like how to treat prisoners of war and slaves and who is punished for what and in what way, who can marry whom and who inherits what, etc, etc, etc. And only a small portion of the text is actually focused on the godly benefits and the spiritual side of Islam. Now here in this world, followers need to struggle and fight for their God even if they don't like it. And everything else happens later, much later, when they're dead. Islam's goal here in the real world is to implement a package of rules, an entire framework which regulates every aspect of life as a Muslim, known as Sharia. Just as I don't agree with the goals of Marxism or nationalism, I don't like Sharia. Because I think human rights are important. Equal rights are important. I think human freedom is important. Islam does not. Islam demands obedience or else. Islam declares itself superior in every aspect and it is not. And that is what I demonstrate in my videos and in everything I contribute on this topic. Where I am emotional in interpersonal relationships, I'm rational and exclusively use reason in business and politics. I'm brutally honest and limit white lies to the minimum. 
And that is my foundation. That is how I examine Islam. And what I find is not pretty. There are a few beneficial, benign, useful aspects in the Quran and the Sunnah, but the vast majority consist of threats against non-Muslims. At the same time, Islam tells followers they are better humans and that they will dominate thanks to their God. And that's why I defend myself against this claim of dominance and its consequence, oppression. I defend human rights and free expression where Islam is already restricting both. And I freely acknowledge that most Muslims are better than their God, but some are not. Some are fundamentalists or extremists, or well, both can be militant at that. And that's why I defend myself against this violence. I was at the wrong end of an AK-47 once in Kabul, so don't tell me that all Muslims are peaceful. And don't try and tell me that as soon as that they are not, they are no longer Muslims. <clears throat> Muslim apologists lie all the time. I don't know why. But that's why I defend myself against the lies and the deceptive propaganda by some Muslims. Not all Muslims and not all apologists are dishonest. Islam tries to restrict science and education, resulting in most Muslims being illiterate and out of almost a thousand Nobel laureates, only one, a single Muslim, has ever received a scientific Nobel Prize. A Muslim living and working in the US. Muslim majority countries don't develop medications or technology they manufacture restrictions. I don't agree with killing gays or keeping slaves or raping them, and that's why I defend myself against the implementation of such bad ideas. I don't agree with beheadings, limb amputations, public flogging or crucifixion, and that's why I defend myself against the implementation of such bad ideas. Muslims in general have a hard time condemning other Muslims who stone a person to death, thinking it is divinely ordained punishment. And I defend myself against the application of such justice. Well, it's not justice, is it? And Muslims have a hard time rejecting Sharia and consider it a set of divine rules set up by an all-powerful, all-knowing creator who handcrafts human beings and who thinks these humans must dance to his fiddle or get tortured. Because this creator God is also all-merciful. Different Dawa groups, I don't know why, but they spread lies and deceive others, so I defend myself against this practice exposing the lies and showing others why these are lies and what the facts are. So I make videos like this because I am also a kind person. I have an altruistic streak in me. I try and help others and show what is right and what is not. So if somebody next to me is being fed a lie, I will tell them, watch out, this is a lie. I am like that. So, in short, I take claims made by the Quran or by people and compare them with reality. That is how I defend myself, comparing claims to reality and then judging for myself whether they are true or not. I try and show that and, and how the claims made in the Quran and of the Quran are unrealistic faulty, flawed, mistaken, unwarranted, or even all of the above. Because some Muslims obediently and doggedly follow the book and the claims made in the book, I provide my critique, hoping that they will start thinking and start evaluating the basis for their belief and become what most other Muslims have already become, better than their God. Thanks for your time.